Okay, we have John Mechie the third here. He has a welcoming remarks. Oh, hello. Hi, everybody. How's your day going? So, good, good. When you build a championship program, you get a lot of people here. We'll go straight to questions here. Do we have anybody with an opening question? Front row here on your right. Well, I didn't want to start out this way, but uh, I'm Tyler Shaw with uh, KBTX and College Station, so I got to ask uh, about Texas A&M. I just want, do you see them as legit SEC West contenders this year? And could, could the game where you guys go to Kyle Field this year, could that be a big game? Definitely. Um, I definitely think Texas A&M is a good team, and I definitely think they will be good this year. And also playing at their stadium will be, um, will definitely be special. They definitely do have a great atmosphere there. Question to your left here on the front row. Hey, John, Charlie Potter with 24-7 Sports. You guys obviously lost Smitty and Waddle this offseason and added five new receivers. Just what's your confidence level with this new group of guys going into 2021? Uh, through the roof. I think my confidence um, for this new receiver room is just through the roof. I think we have a lot of young and great potential, and I'm definitely excited for everybody to be able to see that and us to go out there and showcase our talents. John, to your right on the second row. John, first off, Suit's phenomenal. Thank you. Thank uh, you. After the A&M game last year, a couple of the Aggies said they thought they were a play or two away from maybe winning that game. From your perspective, did you guys uh, see it the same way? Um, I don't think we saw it the same way. Um, I think um, we went in there with um, a game plan of what coaches wanted us to do, and I think we executed it. Um, probably a couple errors here and there, but I think overall um, it, it was a pretty solid game. Question to your left on the third row. Going into uh, this year, obviously with the fans returning, how important is that for you to have that full stadium? And when you guys went to even Miami, it wasn't a full stadium. Was that different? Are you excited to get 100% back? Yeah, man. Sheesh. I'm excited for it. Um, I'm definitely excited to um, get a full stadium again, um, have fans back, um, family, um, all of that. I'm definitely excited for that. John, to your right, front row. John, Jared Joseph, Fox 44 in Baton Rouge. Every year, the first week of November gets separate on the calendar with LSU and Alabama. But the Tigers have a lot of changes with offense and defense. How much of an eye are you going to keep on what they do throughout the season as you guys prepare for them? Um, I honestly don't think I'm going to uh, keep too much of an eye on them during the season. I know what to expect going into them in there. They're going to be a really good team. Um, but it's kind of just um, focusing one game at a time. So right now, I think all my attention is probably on Miami and then so on and so forth. Question to your left here on the second row. Hey, John, Jacques Doucet, WAFB TV. Um, people ask, how, how are you guys able to do this? You know, this dynasty that has been Alabama football for all these years. Is it the players holding each other accountable to a certain level combined with what Coach Saban holds you guys to? I mean, just in a few words or sentences, what, how are you able to do this? Um, definitely. I think it's definitely a combination of all of those um, with Coach Saban and the players. Um, I think it's um, the principles and values of the place, the standard that we have um, of discipline, toughness, commitment, um, effort, pride, all of those, and kind of just um, the players, um, us wanting to be great on um, just being competitive and holding ourselves to that standard. Question on your right in the back row. John, Matt Trent, WBRZ TV in Baton Rouge. Um, how does Alabama handle, if you guys have one, quarterback competitions? Because it seems like when one great one leaves, another one is just plugged in. And from our perspective, we never really hear anything about an Alabama quarterback competition. How is that handled in practice and just throughout the year? There definitely, um, there definitely is. Um, I think especially this year we have a really good room with um, Bryce, Paul, Jalen, and I think they're all doing a really – great job. Um, I think they're all making really big strides and um, I'm excited for that room. So um, I'm excited to see um, how well they come along um, and just excited for the season with them. To your left here in the third row. Hey John, Ben Bobick, WRCB in Chattanooga. With Bill O'Brien running the offense now coming from the NFL, how have you guys been adjusting to how he likes to operate and do things? Um, it's been pretty cool. Um, having Sark as a great um, offensive coordinator this past season, but now again, Coach O'Brien, I think everybody knows who he is and um, what he does. And um, definitely excited, and it has been fun seeing um, him collaborate with the Alabama offense. So definitely excited for a, a season of that. Stay on your left in the second row. 
Hey, John, Nikki from Atlanta CW69. Um, Chick-fil-A kickoff is coming. What excites you the most about going up against that Miami defense, and especially probably a new defense with Manny Diaz at the helm? I'm definitely excited. Definitely, they're definitely going to have a good defense, a good offense, a good team. Um, but I think most excited just to take the field with the guys, um, knowing all the work that we put in thus far and all the work that we're going to put in going into camp. Um, I'll definitely be excited to finally um, hit the field and finally get to play. Question to your right on the third row. Lyndon Blake, Way 31 Huntsville. Hey, John, with Saban hinting at how much money some of the players are making off NIL, has there been any jealousy in the locker room? Um, I, think, I think there has been a lot of, um, I think everybody is aware that as long as we continue to do what we do on the field, um, we'll be able to continue to make um, more and more opportunities for ourselves off the field. To the right here in the front row. Hey, John, Kate Thomas, WFB TV, Baton Rouge. Coach Saban mentioned kind of the evolution of the strength and conditioning process. He says because of the technology that you guys have these days, y'all are able to kind of cut things out because he does know how fast you guys run and they can kind of track all that. So how has the technology and the strength and conditioning staff kind of helped evolutionize you guys? Definitely, I definitely think um, the technology and the science of it um, has definitely um, helped us a lot take strides in football and um, seeing um, just kind of how we get better every week. Um, we kind of just see it week in and week out and trusting the process of the new way of uh, training. So um, we definitely see the results of it. To your left here in the back row. Hey, John, Rex Castillo from WRB on Columbus, Georgia. Uh, Bryce Young saw some action last year, but obviously with Mac taking most of the snaps uh, throughout the season. What did you see from him? I know that he had limited stats throughout the 2020 season, but how excited are you for what he can do heading into this camp? Um, I'm definitely excited for Bryce. Um, you kind of see that uh, he had um, an awareness out there. Um, he had all the tools. Um, so definitely, definitely, com definitely excited to see him get comfortable in there and uh, play his game. To the right here in the front row. John, what's kind of the outlook of the, the offense? I mean, you're, are you guys expecting to be as dynamic as you were last year? And with, you know, your teammate Devontae last year winning the Heisman as a wide receiver, is that kind of encouraging, motivating for what can be accomplished? Um, I definitely think it's an example of seeing um, what happens when you buy in and do all the little things and are committed to it. Um, as far as the offense, absolutely. Um, definitely expect us to be as dynamic, if not more dynamic this season. So I'm definitely looking forward to it. Question in the back on the left. Hey, John, talk about uh, you're the number one option now at wide receiver. What did you learn from guys like Devontae and Waddle uh, and some of the others before them that you'll pass on to some of the freshmen coming up this year? Um, learned a lot. Um, Learned a lot of how to um, handle yourself off the field and on the field, but also learned a lot in the game of football, a lot of minor details, and I think it's a lot of those little details that I'd be able to pass on. Question here on the left, second row. Hey, John. Um, Atlanta has witnessed a lot of outstanding wide receivers come through the city. Calvin Johnson at Tech, I mean, Julio, Calvin. What's the legacy that you want to leave knowing that you're having an amazing opportunity this year? Um, I'm definitely excited for the opportunity, and I'm aware of all the great receivers that have definitely come through. Um, and I definitely think that if I continue to try and be the best version of myself, that when I look back at it, I, I'll be satisfied. Two final questions. The first in the back on the right. John, I don't know how many times you've gone up against him one-on-one, -on -one, but what's it like going up against Derek Stingley these past couple years? Um, he's definitely a really good player. Um, everybody knows who he is as well. Um, he's definitely really good. and. Um, definitely, they definitely have a really good defense as well as a whole. So um, I think their whole team should be really good this year. Okay, before the final question, again, Coach Saban is coming up in a few minutes. We want to take care of as many people as we can. So please, to the best of your ability, keep your questions concise and no double part questions. And we want to keep a nice path like we did when John came in here so it's easy access. We'll take our final question right here in the front. Yeah, John, you guys added Jamison Williams to your wide receiver room from Ohio State. Just what are your early impressions of him and what he can bring to the offense this fall? I think, I think it'll be exciting. I think um, he'll only make the offense more dynamic. Um, Jamo definitely will bring a lot of speed to the offense. Um, so I'm definitely excited to see how the offense is with him in it. John, thank you very much. Talk thank you. Thank you for having me.
we want to welcome our first subject today, Fedarian Mathis from Alabama, and he'd like to open up with a couple of remarks. Uh, hey, how y'all doing? I just want to start off by shouting out my team, you know, those guys back at home, and that's it. <laughs> okay, we'll go to questions. Fedarian, over here to your left on the second row. Ryan Hennessy, NBC 13 in Birmingham. Uh, you talk about shouting out your team, your quarterback, Bryce Young, uh, a lot of you know, hype going into the season. What have you seen out of him as a leadership and a skill-wise going into this year, replacing Mac Jones, a first-round draft pick? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I'm very excited for uh, Bryce Young. He stepped up being a leader. Uh, he more vocal, vocal now, and um, I'm just very excited to see what he, he you know, does coming into fall camp. We'll move to your right here on the front row. How you doing? Good. It's Tyler Shaw with uh, KBTX and College Station. I, I was just curious your thoughts on Texas A&M. Do you see them, you know, this year as a, a legit contender in the SEC West? And, and how big w could that game be when you guys come to Kyle Field? Uh, you know, for us, you know, we how we do. We take one game at a time. Uh, you know, we're not even in the season yet to come in on those guys. So I can, I probably can give you more once we get there. So. You're about 50 days away from the start of the season. How's the team shaping up and the excitement there? Yeah, I'm very excited, man. I got, I got good hopes in this team. Uh, it's going to be a very good team. Everybody's coming along, man. The chemistry uh, is starting to get well. Everybody's buying in, doing their job, um, no complaining. Uh, and I'm, I'm just ready to go in into my last fall count with a lot of great guys. How important is it to keep last year in the past and focus on this year? Uh, it's, it's, it's very important because, you know, that's, that's in the past and that's the last year team. Uh, it's a whole new squad and we got to, you know, build our own team chemistry and, and set our own goals and, you know, keep pushing. Okay, we have a question here to your left, second row. Got a question about one of your teammates. Uh, LeBron Ray has battled through his fair share of injuries. What is a guy like that capable of when he's healthy on the field? Uh, man, LeBron, he's very healthy. Uh, I'm excited that he's back. Uh, you know, I came in with LeBron Ray, and, and his confidence, I love it. Uh, he never gave up. Uh, he never cried about anything. He just kept pushing, man. And I hope great things happen for all of us, you know, this upcoming season. Back here on the right, in the front row. When you look at 2021, <clears throat> how uh, exciting is it? You know, it could be more of a normal football season, playing in front of full stadiums again, as opposed to you know last year where you didn't have that. Uh, man, I know it's gonna be lit this year. All the fans gonna be back, you know, and we finna get that real, that real Bama standard, you know, from the fans also. So it's gonna be very electric, you know, as I say. <laughs> to your left on the second row. I was picking up on that, but last year, without as many fans, and even going to the national championship with not as many fans, what was that like? And what, did you guys kind of miss the fans going into that push to the national championship? Oh, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I feel like as the season went on, the fans started, you know, it started getting more like the crowd. It felt, to me, it felt like the crowd was there more. And like I said, I'm just happy that they're gonna be back especially about this being my last go around so I get to experience it one more time. We're going to move to your right here on the second row. Yesterday, Coach Saban said that Bryce Young is close to making seven figures in NIL deals already. Does that change the kind of complexion in the locker room when some guys are, are cashing in like that so fast? Uh, yeah, no, if that's the case, uh, you know, we're happy for him. You know, I just want to see everybody win at the end of the day. We'll go to your left here on the third row. Could you touch on LeBron Ray and what you're expecting from him this season on the field and from a leadership standpoint? Uh, you know, I'm just really expecting him to, um, to come back, just to be a leader that he's always been, and you know, just give it, give it his all, because you know, we ain't got that many more left. So I'm, I'm just ready for him to just be back out there on the field for real. We'll stay on the left, back on the fourth row. Uh, quick question, you guys, you know, didn't have a full off season last year and yet you still won a national championship. How excited are you to see the potential of this team knowing you're going to have full, you had full spring and you're going to have full summer workouts to get ready for this season? Uh, I mean, I feel like it's just going to make us even better. Uh, you know, we just got to load up and keep pushing. 
uh, you know, last year was, you know, it's over. So it's a whole new year. So ain't nothing going to change about Bama. So we're going to continue to work. We'll go to your right on the second row. You're originally from Louisiana. You've got LSU coming back to Alabama to play you guys. Last time they were in y'all's stadium, things mm -hmm. got a little wild. What do you expect from that game this year? Uh, you know, that's in the past, man. And like I said, it's a new team. Uh, and we got to do what we do best and, you know, handle business and, you know, take one team, you know, one at a time. Uh, you can't think about those guys until we get there. We have about five more minutes. Are there any more questions? Okay, we're going to stay here on the right, second row. There have been years in the past when it's Alabama and then everyone else, especially in the SEC, where it you know, hasn't been particularly close. Do you feel like over the last year or so, some of the other teams in the West have kind of closed the gap and made it a little more competitive uh, division, at least? Uh, uh, what would you say again? <laughs> You feel like the SEC West as a division is, is getting a little more competitive. There have been years in the past where it's Alabama, drop off, drop off, drop off than everyone else, but some of those other teams seem to be on the rise at least. Yeah, for me, I mean, every game, uh, you, it's always an adjustment for every game. Uh, you know, everybody, you know, when they play us, they give us give, give, um, give their best, and um, it's always a challenge, you know. So I wouldn't say everything is always easy. Uh, or nothing like that. I just say that, you know, we always got to adjust to everything that we do. So. We'll stay in the right side, front row. Is it any more challenging going into a season <clears throat> coming off a national championship where, you know, maybe you're afraid of guys getting complacent and just they expect to win? Yeah, you know, I think that's, the very, that's a very important thing, you know, to stay on guys about, you know, the last, what, what last year team did, you know, this is a whole new team and, you know, saying like, we, we can't think about that, you know, cause we trying to get back to that point. I mean, we can use that as motivation, but, you know, being cocky like we won, like we already won, you know, that's, that's not going to get us nowhere, so. We'll go to your left here, second row. Hey, Federer and Jacques Doucet, WAFB TV. You being a Louisiana native, I'm just curious, when you commit to Alabama, and you've obviously had a lot of success, do, do you hear negative things back home? Or are more people supporting the Alabama Crimson Tide? Just what, what has that process been like for you over the last several years? Uh, it's been very good, you know. Even when I did leave, you know, a lot of people probably was mad, but also my family was in my corner, you know. They, they stuck with me all the way, and that's the only thing that really matters. On the left side, third row. Hey there, uh, looking ahead to the Chick-fil-A kickoff, what excites you about playing a team like Miami and uh, just about that neutral territory in Atlanta? I mean, you guys have played there a decent amount of times. Oh uh, man, we know the, the environment gonna be electric and it's gonna be very fun. You know, I think those guys probably will have a great, great team and uh, I love the energy that Miami brings to the, to the college football atmosphere. One final question over here on your right, second row. Fedarian, I'm not sure if you know, but Nick Saban um, was chosen to be part of the Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame this past year. He'll be inducted actually in 2022 because of everything with the pandemic. What was, I guess, everyone on the football's team reaction, him getting inducted into that Sports Hall of Fame back in Louisiana? Uh, that's lit. I mean, he's a legend, so I, want, I mean, I'm not surprised. I mean, I'm happy for Coach. Um, he deserved it. But Aaron, thank you very much. Good job. All right, thank you.